Hello and welcome to chapter 16 of the UVM Primer code videos. In this video we're going to look at the code associated with the 16th chapter in the UVM Primer, the one where we talk about using analysis ports in a test bench. This figure in front of us demonstrates what we're doing in this test bench. Uh, we've taken the tiny ALU BFM, which if you recall has been inside the coverage monitor and the scoreboard and the tester. And in doing that, we've been asking these objects to do both the protocol monitoring of the signals and the analysis of the data. What we're doing now is we're splitting that out. So now we have the tiny ALU BFM doing the protocol monitoring of the signals, and it's passing its data to an object called a command monitor or result monitor. Those guys are putting the data into an analysis port, and then we can subscribe to the analysis port. So we see here that both the coverage and um, the analysis FIFO in the scoreboard are subscribed to this analysis port. And, uh, and also the result uh, monitor, the, the scoreboard subscribes to the result monitor. Nice thing too here is we could do something like put another object over here uh, and call it a printer and have it subscribe to the analysis port, we would get printing capability and the behavior of the rest of the test bench wouldn't change at all. That's the example of being able to make a test bench more powerful and more flexible if you continue to break the functionality into smaller and smaller pieces. Let's take a look at this test bench from the bottom up. So we'll start by looking at the tiny ALU BFM. Here's the tiny ALU BFM and it has now uh, something new. It has a command monitor variable and a result monitor variable. <clears throat> so it actually holds handles two objects. If we go down to the bottom of the BFM, we can see our monitoring loops. So for example, our command monitor uh, starts uh, at every clock edge, checks the start signal, and if the start signal is high, then it checks to see whether it's in the middle of a new command. It goes and it takes. If it isn't a new command, it writes the uh, it writes the data to the uh, to the command monitor through this method called write to monitor. So you can see here, we've got write to monitor writes a, b, and op to the command monitor object. Uh, if we're doing a no op, then we just set ourselves back to new command. Otherwise, we go to the top and keep monitoring the start signal. But if uh, the start signal stays high, then new command stays low because this isn't a no op, it's probably a multiply. And we only send one copy of the command up to the command monitor object. Similarly, on the negative edge of reset, we send a reset command. And you can see it right here where we're sending reset op to the command monitor object. So we're capturing both the resets and the, uh, the resets and the, the other kind of commands. And then uh, finally we have a result monitor that at the positive edge of clock checks the done signal. And if the done signal is high then it takes the result bus and it sends that to the write to monitor method inside the result monitor object. So we have two different objects up on the test bench and both of them are available to the tiny ALU BFM. Let's see how the BFM got pointers to those objects or handles to those objects so that it could access them. If we look at the command monitor, we see that the command monitor has, as we see in this picture right here, by the way, the command monitor has a, an analysis point and a pointer to the BFM. Now here's our analysis port, the UVM analysis port. And in the build phase, we pull the, the pointer of the BFM out of the config DB like we've always done. But now we put a handle to ourselves into the BFM. So we say bfm.commandmonitor h gets this, and this is always whatever uh, object we're in. It's a, sort of a, a standard in object-oriented programming. The word this almost always means this particular object. We also create a new analysis port. And here's that right to monitor method that the, that the uh, BFM uses. So it calls write to monitor and it passes the command, it, it, it had the command struct, we'll take a look at that in a sec. It reads the A and the B and uh, the op, it converts the op from uh, bits to an enumerated type and that's done up above or actually it's done right down here in this function and, uh, and then we write that struct into this analysis port. 
So let's take a quick look up here. We've noticed a couple of things. One, we've noticed that our analysis port uses this command S type. So what is that? So if we take a look at the tiny ALU, if we take a look at the tiny ALU package, we see that we have the enumerated type, but now we have this new type called a, a command S, and it's a struct, and it contains A, B, and op. So this struct is what's being passed around the analysis port here. And so down in our write to monitor, we are taking the data out of the um, that that comes from our the function call, putting it in the struct, and writing the struct into the analysis port so that other people can use it. Uh, similarly, we have the result monitor. The result monitor does the same thing in terms of uh, pulling its BFM out of the database, putting a pointer to itself uh, into that BFM right here. So now the, the BFM has a pointer to the result monitor and also creating an analysis port that in this case handles a short int variable type. Short int is, uh, is 16 bits, which is our results from the, uh, from the tiny ALU. And then uh, we also have our write to monitor, but it's much simpler. It just takes the short int and it writes it to the analysis port. And that's our result monitor. If we go back to our picture, we see here that we've got, um, we've got a command monitor and a result monitor. And uh, now we are going to look at the scoreboard and the coverage. So let's look at the coverage first. So we see our coverage object extends UVM subscriber. So this is new. Instead of being a direct extender of UVM component, we're extending UVM subscriber and uh, that which in turn extends UVM component. And we're saying that this subscriber receives a command struct, which makes sense because we're going to connect to that. And down below here, after we go through all of the coverage information, we have our write method. And uh, just like we saw with the dice, the write method always has an, uh, an argument called T. And uh, in this case, T is of type command S because that matches the uh, type of subscriber we are. When we get called, we take A and B and uh, op out of T and we, uh, we call the, uh, we call the cover groups to sample the data. Similar now, we also need to look at the scoreboard. So the scoreboard is an odd case because it is both a subscriber to the result, but it also needs to be able to pull a command. And so we're going to do that with this analysis FIFO. So let's take a let's take a look at this at the scoreboard. The scoreboard has an object in it called a UVM TLM analysis FIFO, which we're calling command F. Uh, the analysis FIFO also holds command S type of data, so uh, we're going to be loading commands into this analysis FIFO. Uh, in our build phase, we create a new instance of the analysis FIFO for ourselves. And then our write phase is where we do all the work. Our write method is where we do all the work. Now you'll notice that the scoreboard extends UVM subscriber short int. So this is expecting to get a short int, so the write matches that. The T argument is of type short int. We get called when there's a new result. So we are called with a new result. And we start looping through that command FIFO, waiting to get a, an operation that's not a no-op or a reset. So the command FIFO may have filled up with a bunch of no-ops, but eventually gets something that generates a result. And so we are going to keep reading commands out of that command FIFO until we get one that is a, that is a real command. Then we'll take that command and we'll figure out whether it's an add, an and, an x, or a multiply. And we'll create a predicted result based on that. And then we simply check, is the predicted result equal to the result that we received uh, from the result monitor? And we uh, give our, our yes or no based on that. This is all tied together uh, in the environment. So if we look at this picture again, we have this light gray environment. That's where all these pieces are connected together. So in our environment, we have uh, the random tester, we have the coverage, the scoreboard, the command monitor, and the result monitor. We have a nice build phase to build all those things. So we have all those objects. 
And now we also have a connect phase. So the connect phase gets called after the build phase. And the way you connect analysis ports, as we saw in the last chapter, is you, uh, you take the analysis port object, it has a method called connect, and you pass it the analysis export from another um, object that has extended UVM subscriber. So when you extend UVM subscriber, you automatically get an object in there called analysis export. Uh, in the case of the scoreboard, uh, the result monitor is, uh, we're using the analysis export and the scoreboard expects to get a result. We use the analysis export in the command FIFO to receive commands. So that's how we can set up one object that can take two kinds of, uh, of data. And then our coverage monitor only takes uh, commands and creates our coverage information. So we've seen in this example uh, how we can take our test bench and break it into pieces and use the analysis ports to start passing data around the test bench.